So if it's not so popular, we call it underground. Once it starts to become popular, then it's not underground anymore. Yeah. And I guess today we'll call it a sellout. You know what I mean? Okay, welcome to another episode of Reverie Podcast. And today we have on our podcast, aka Sounds Amanda. Let's go! <laughs> okay, so right, I think uh, this one is a rare level kind of thing uh, where you have a master's and at the same time you are in the entertainment industry, you know. Most of us are uh, just like heck care stuff. My like, diploma even finish, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, maybe maybe we can like dive deeper, like, you know, just now we are like talking a little bit about it, you know. But mm. how was like the process like, you know? Like for me, right, I was like studying degree, I really want to hang myself already. But I mm. cannot even imagine mm. masters, some next level or what. Yes, yeah. I mean, studying is still studying, lah. You know, and I guess like when you committed, you know, so like like this idea of going back to school came came to my brain only during COVID. COVID does stuff to you, okay? <laughs> you know, when you're just stuck at home and you're you're just working, and then you just like you even your hours are working, also you don't really you don't really mm. take no of it anymore, right? You're working like freaking 19, 20 hour days, mm. and then I was like, oh, once I get out of COVID, you know, like with all the o OT hours I'm doing at home, what what can I do with this money? Let's go back to school. Mm. And then after after I I got myself like um, committed to school, my first month, I was like, no nah, man, I don't like this. Eh. And I still got like another one and a half years to go, you oh, know? Shit. Like, yeah. But I mean, you commit to it and then you just do it. What? You know, by hope or by crook, like, wow. you will just finish it, right? Mm. Like, yeah, unless you decide to quit halfway, la, you know? Mm. So I just did. Mm. Which was me, la, twice. <laughs> <laughs> I did it twice. <laughs> how do you, like, you know, like, during the time, right? Like, how do you force yourself to, like, I need to get yeah. this done yeah, 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 yeah. when you say like you know, I will get it done get it done but how do you like force yourself to I mean you know like yeah. first and foremost uh, higher education is very expensive <laughs> <laughs> I know <laughs> it's freaking expensive and like you know and then it's coming out of your own pocket right? you're just like man I have to you know you pay every semester like what ten, twelve thousand dollars and you're just Holy like shit. right and then you're just like I, well, I have to finish this, man. Like, you know, like, yeah. I need to, I need to prove it to myself. Like, I have some pride. <laughs> if not, I just waste this money, you yeah. know, right? Like, yeah. yeah. Very, very similarly to our previous guest, DJ Crumbs, right? You're also one of the few that mm. DJs re very regularly on almost every roster and you have a day job, you know? Mm. So I think during COVID, I guess you're not that negatively impacted, right? No, I actually had a very supportive family. So, mm. like, I stayed in a home with, like, my mom, my dad, my siblings, uh, my sisters, uh, uh, then fi um, fiancé now husband and then there mm. was my brother with his wife two kids two helpers like it was very really large and Whoa. no no actually they were supposed to um, move out at a time to their own place um, but then COVID happened so everything shut right mm. so we all stuck together la, and then you know I mean it was interesting because I thought it was going to be more difficult mm. like and then it was easier than I realised you know we were really supportive and um we just work together and thankfully also, I mean, uh, thanks to my parents, uh, like, you know, our home, we are privileged enough to be able to hide in like the pockets, mm. you know, of spaces in our home to have our own space, you know, and mm. I think most of the conflict that I hear from friends is that they were all stuck in like one mm -hmm. place together. They, they just hear everybody talk, have meetings, you know, like there's really no peace, you know. But yeah, for me, it was like pretty okay. And thankfully also, like, I managed to get like a really good, I was working in this agency and I got like a really good contract. And then they kept rolling the contract, like whole, the, the whole of COVID. So Whoa. yeah, I mean, which was like, you know, I mean, uh, it's a privilege uh, to be able to find a company that values your work and then wants to keep hiring you. Mm -hmm. uh, compared to, of course, like there were quite a number of friends who uh, really struggled, right? Because they either, uh, like they got made redundant, you mm. know, and then they couldn't do anything else, you know, and then it was so hard to find another job because everyone was firing people, you know, mm. so yeah, I was pretty lucky, uh, actually. Do yeah. you have a, like a dream of like, you know, full-time DJing or is like design also a very big passion of yours? That's why you're like sustaining both. Well, yeah, I mean, to me, I, I realised, I think when I was younger, I had like moments where I like, okay, I want to be like this superstar designer. And then when I started, I've always loved music, like I grew up in a, not say a very musical environment, but my dad was very musical. So he was the one who like, you know, bought me all my musical instruments when I was a kid, you know, made me like learn how to play music and stuff like, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I guess like, you know, there were moments so where I was like, wow, I want to be in like, you know, a, in a bunch of bands, get famous, make my own music mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah, those dreams, right? But mm -hmm. I think now at my age, like, I feel, you know, you're able to see a bit clearly, like what are the things that like you can hold on to that you also that also can be sustainable, right? You know, yeah, DJing, wow. yeah, DJ, DJing was one that I felt like was very sustainable because okay, I also realized that 
even as a designer, I'm not a good creator, you know. Like, mm-hmm. you ask me, like, produce stuff, like, I, I have very little attention to detail mm-hmm. and to, like, and I'm not nerdy enough to, like, go so deep into it that I really want to, like, you know, produce whole albums and, mm-hmm. and you know, really make, like, the craft, like, really, technical. really, yeah, technical and, and to make everything so special. <coughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, but, um, yeah, you know, I guess, like, DJing was a, a way of, like, and why it was so sustainable because it allowed me to at least share the music I love and I listen to a lot of music, you mm-hmm. know, like, yeah, and I collect a lot of music. So, yeah, and it's nice to feel like you're able to give that kind of experience to people. So. It's like you know the things really, just share with people. Yeah, then it's yeah. like really easily con- um, translate into your DJing skills. Uh, yeah. Rather than like most people need to purposely go and dig. You're like, you know, on your free time, you're listening to a lot already. Yes, mm. correct. You know, and yeah. design is the same thing also. Like, mm, I mean, like, I used to think to myself, wow, you know, I want to create my own studio and stuff like that, you know. Um, but then you actually realise that you need much more than just being, like, a really good designer. You need to have that kind of business acumen. You need to be super disciplined and stuff like that. Like, yeah, you know, and um, which is, like, uh, some things I have and some uh-huh. things I don't, you know. <laughs> yeah, and I realise yeah. I have those flaws as well, you know. But I do, I do think that, like, you know, uh, having... Like, an opportunity to design for people also makes me feel very happy mm. because when you do this kind of, like, service for people as well and you can create something that they enjoy, you know, it's the same thing with, like, DJing that stuff in, mm. in that sense. So, right now, I feel like my... I don't know how long I will be be a designer. I don't know mm. how long I will continue being a DJ. But mm. I know, like, that I love to do things that makes me feel I am useful to people or I give them joy. Mm-hmm. So maybe next time if any of these things like stop like design or you know DJ maybe I will do something else that charity work yeah charity <laughs> or like you know I love feeding people maybe I cook for people you know I, I yeah, don't know yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah you know yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah I'm not gonna say like um yeah you know that that all these things are forever it's not you know yeah. our life can change COVID has showed us that like wow. life can change so much you know? Know? yeah exactly yeah. yeah speaking of COVID so when you before COVID you were designing many things but the mm-hmm. like the things that you were designing did it change during COVID? Oh, hundred percent. Like yeah. um, for a very long time, like actually, yeah. So, uh, you know, we were speaking a bit earlier, and like I graduated from with uh like a major in jewelry design. Mm. So when I got out of uh, NAFA, National Academy of Fine Arts, in case mm. people don't know, shout uh, out, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> man, <laughs> yeah, last year, last year better, ah, <laughs> sorry, yeah, I'm not yeah. matter. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Heard it here yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But um, yeah, I mean, like, uh, sorry, what was the question again? Uh? Like, did things change? Oh, like, did things change? Yeah, mm. yeah, you know, like, that's why I say, like, you realise that life is, is fluid that way, right? Like, you never mm. really exactly stick to things that you initially thought you would be doing and you think that you'll do the rest of your life. You know, some mm. people have the ability to do that, but, like, I mean, life sometimes throws a couple of curves, curveballs or you realise that you change your mind or you don't like certain things that you're doing, you know, then you try to find other ways, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you know, then I started doing, like, uh, mostly like illustration, branding identity. Mm. And then after that, I switched to doing some ad stuff for a while. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I think the design sphere or the realm is quite wide. So as long as you can design and you feel that, you know, you have um, the ability to kind of be a little bit more open-minded about what you can do with the same skills, then why not, right? Yeah. So right now, I work in a fintech. Mm. Oh. Yeah. What's your yeah. design feel? Uh, yes, yeah. uh, but actually, I, I, like, I manage like payment cards. Like, so I work in a company called WISE and I nice. uh, actually am a card designer and packaging specialist. So I do anything that has to do with like the design of cards, like payment cards, you know, then the experience of cards, like where we use it as well. So, so it's like, this guy fucking love WISE. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The conversion rate fucking good, okay? <laughs> I know, I did my market research already. <laughs> WISE is so far one of the best. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. So basically you see Revolut, then you're like, hey, uh, somebody nah. need a pay raise. <laughs> Please, please tell us about your money. Yeah. The boss. <laughs> yeah. So just now you speak about two things, right, that I resonate uh, a lot with, la, which is like, as you grow older, right, you realise, okay, you need to do what's sustainable and you also know, need to know your weakness. Uh. And then mm. last time when I was young, right, whatever weakness I have, I tried to like, you know, go and like iron it out, go and learn more about it too. Mm. But then you realise that you are just one person, you know, you can't mm. be doing like 10 things at once. You need to like, des- de- depend on people, so like, like a yeah. team or something like that. Mm. So this kind of like leads me to my next point, right, which is like longevity as a female DJ. A lot of people think that it's impossible. Some female DJs think that they can't do it, but you are like showing it 
you know you're not even mm. speaking about the longevity but you are like doing it mm, so mm. for yourself you have dj for like very long already la. and you know from our previous podcast with durio we also kind of know like the ups and downs mm -hmm. but like what is the you know secret to longevity you know because we see that you are doing such a like huge uh, variety of shows right literally from mm. king of bass all the way to like cartier or this kind of yeah. thing mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so speaking of open-minded yeah. you can play every event so yeah, one yeah. underground event one cartier event mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. But I mean, I guess the question I want to ask is like, you know, what's the difference between like a male DJ and a female DJ? Mm -hmm. Like for, for, for you guys, like what do you feel? Well, is he the reverse back <laughs> us the question. Yeah, yeah because I... like, you know, we are, you know, the yeah. way like the question is presented is like yeah. saying that like, oh, we are kind of like, mm. like it, it is, it's unique, you know, but technically mm. we're all DJs, right? You know, it's just that like, I mean, admittedly, wow. I mean, oh, 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 and we're not sponsored, okay, but sponsor us if you want. Okay. Yeah, that time we were, we were what, 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 what you order? Uh, the Jollibee. The Jollibee. Yeah, we, yeah, we keep having Jollibee at one period. Yeah, oh my yeah. gosh. I think a lot of times, right, like, uh, guy DJ always have this, like, resentment. Uh, like, when mm. I just started, right, oh, I cannot even get a show anywhere, but mm. girls are already getting big clubs. Like, mm. back then when I was DJing with Nash and Hanif, right, Wow, we cannot even get anywhere. So, right, we had to like pull some classroom tables and throw an illegal party in Singapore for them. <laughs> but girls are really getting booked at F Club all this. They haven't even learned DJing, you know. They're just like yeah. two, three months in. Mm -hmm. And then for us, we already like DJ at that point like three, four years. Uh, and we already like, you know, starting mm -hmm. to join DJ battles and all that kind of things. Mm -hmm. And then it, it's just like um, so unfair, right? Until mm. right, we resign our fate to it. Right? We just mm. like, oh, it is what it is. For, yeah, yeah, for me, I feel that. So angry. it's like more like the demand also. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Because you go there, then you like thinking, what she have? That I don't have. Got la, got la. Got la. Got la, like. <laughs> 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 yeah, I do say this. Can I? Because like sometimes, like you know when you say uh, resentment, is like, wow, you mm. train so hard, you work at home so much, practice so much, then you go to this, see the mm. DJ playing, then she don't know what she's doing. Yeah, but I also yeah. think it depends on the kind of scenes that like you yeah. guys also play music for, right? Yeah. Like, you know, because like when, I guess I say, I, I guess I, when people ask me questions or so about, you know, specifically like uh, women who DJ who, are in what I would say like very commercial scenes like mm. this often you know we also kind of ask ourselves like you know are these like are the music being played or the people being hired in these venues like do they care about the mm. music at all you yeah. know um, so that makes a huge difference too and then obviously if they are really about like image and you know um, I don't know maybe uh, there's a there's a factor of like maybe advertising uh, mm. a, a good looking uh, woman yeah. also better. Like think, it's, yeah. it's marketing, right? You yeah, know? Yeah, 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 so like, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, like, I think, have yeah. to play the game. Hello. Yeah, you know, but like for me, I, I feel that like I don't, I don't really subscribe to those scenes, you mm. know, that's the thing. Like, you know, so maybe that's why like, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't um, make as much like, yeah, I, I've definitely heard of a uh, certain um, crazy, crazy. Yeah, 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 certain like yeah. Uh, uh, women um, who DJ and then they get like really, really massive rates and I'm just like, wow. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, don't I also know. cannot command this kind of rate. <laughs> I was like, maybe yeah. I've never just like, oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. I think it's really like that. Eh. Like, yeah. I meet yeah. some of my friends also, they tell me, like, hey, this female DJ playing. Then I say, you know what she play, man? Don't know, la, but I just want to go but, see. But it's a, <laughs> it's, a, it's a popularity game, right? Yeah. You know? So, like, yeah. But, I mean, I don't know, la, I guess for me, like, to answer back to your question, you know, like, if you, you know, just like, of course, like, being gender aside and stuff, I think, like, if you want to be you know, uh, if you want to stay in the scene for a long time, it's good to be really, really honest about like, what you want out of it, you know? Mm. Yeah, like... What, how deep who, are you willing to go? Yeah, how, <laughs> like, you know, uh, who are you playing for? Mm. What are you playing for? Like, you know, do you actually love music? music? Do you want to... Yeah. What do you want to... You know, what do you want to exchange on the dance floor? Is it just yeah. like, big bangers that, you know, uh, you want to get people drunk? To, uh, I mean, want people get drunk too or like, you know, uh, I mean, for you, is that image? You know, I mean, of course, also, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, you know, this is like, no, of uh, it's like, um, it's not like... Uh, to each his own. Yeah, mm. you know, no offense to like, you know, all these like, like super like, you know, mm. last time they had this term, right, model DJs and yeah. stuff. And I actually, honestly, I felt like, like, wasn't very really fair, you know, because some of these uh, women who are categorized under, under those like terms as well, like other female DJs, like, I thought they were really good, you know, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's so mm -hmm. unfortunate that they had to be, like, pigeonholed into, like, oh, you know, you actually, like, 
you're not very intelligent, you mm. just like like to show body, you don't know how to play, and then it's quite sad, right? Maybe yeah. the management also. I mean, it could yeah. be, you know, yeah. like, yeah, or just maybe the kind of scenes they serve that like objectify them that way, mm. you know? Mm. Like, yeah, I mean, to be fair also, I do think that like, um, you no know, DJs also get objectified, like, you know? Like, <laughs> I'm the very, very, very swipe one, ah. Oh. Yo, sure we know who you are, <laughs> man. We know who you are. <laughs> wow. Very sure there is, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Or maybe like between you men, I'm not too sure if there's like more DJs that, you know, um, I yeah, don't know, play yeah, yeah. the game a bit better, you know, mm. because like I say, it's a popularity contest, mm -hmm. right? You know, like, yeah. And then if you don't get like, if you don't get more famous than the other, like in a sh in the shortest amount of time, like, you know, are you considered mm. good or bad? You mm -hmm. know, that kind of thing, like, yeah. Mm. But it's interesting that you shared that, you know, you didn't have like gigs and stuff when we first started because actually me and, me and Serene started at a girl because we, 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 we couldn't right. get, get make your own la, make your yeah, own la. yeah we were just like you guys like you know, <laughs> like, you know we, we couldn't fit into that box right yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. or maybe people tried to you know to say if you want to get this this is how you do it but you don't so right. like, you know, but we just I like, know we just want to play a couple of chill tunes you know so mm. we just we, we, we just had a couple of friends who ran a few bars we, we just like say hey you know let's like just do our own party there la, mm. you know you know, and then that time we started the uh, we we just graduated from the the boot camp, the DJ mm. boot camp in Zoo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the FFF girls, and we we're just like, oh, why don't we just create like a party where we just have these girls? Because all of us were like, we just graduated, we don't really know how to play to people. We are just we're making mistakes all the time, you know. <laughs> so why don't we just have our own party where we can make our own mistakes? It's our mistake party, like, you know? <laughs> like yeah, 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 you know, where the expectations were very low, right? Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you all are very critical of yourself, la, which is like why um, I guess one of the success contributing factors, you also like check each other, you know, like like whenever somebody fucks up and then you will tell each other that kind yeah, of thing, right? I mm. think, yeah, yeah, I think uh, like it was, I, I do have to say there's a huge difference I feel between like men and women in general, not even like music scenes or anything that like, mm. I mean, uh, I, I think women are able to help each other more in that sense. We are we're much more willing and more expressive to tell each other our problems with what we're facing. You know, so let's say if we are trying to learn how to do that together or we're exchanging music, you know, or we we experience some like difficulties, right, you know, mm. um, then we we'll, are we'll, we'll willing to like talk to each other out and like say, hey, you know, we we are sharing the pie and we're not really mm. trying to keep the side of the pie to ourselves. Anyway, it's not like I was like a very experienced DJ or whatever, you know, so if we have learnings, we just share. But I feel mm. that, um, you know, the whole... It's this whole fucking patriarchy thing, like, you know, like, all <laughs> men cannot express their feelings, you know, like, you know, and then you, you, you're too close to one guy and then you bro a bit, then people say you gay, you know, like, like it's, it's, it's very bad, right, you know, yeah. you know, we don't have this kind of problem, so I think we're able to help each other out a bit more, yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah, I think, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, you know, it all boils down to, like, community, right, you yeah. know, mm. like, yeah, if, if everybody can, you know, of course, that's, needless, needless to say, there are also a lot of men who help us out also, like, you know, like, mm. basically, we, we found a lot of good friends who, I mean, regardless whether we were we were girls or, or not, like just you know, help us out and you know, contributed with, uh, to whatever we did and tried, like especially when we were running at a girl because we was mm. like, everything came out of own pocket and it was like mm. you know that kind of. And I mean, like for example, you. you guys doing this podcast is like your I own thing, you. right? Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> pain, 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 pain. Yeah, very pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So, so uh -huh. like uh, speaking of the DJing, I so say like mm. when I when we when you talk about being open minded, so you you can play this, you can play that, but do uh, you consider yourself being an underground DJ? Oh uh, oh yeah, we were talking about. I think we yeah. we we in in, in a, like a matter of like ten minutes or something, yeah. we've like moved on to so many different topics. Oh yeah, yeah but like um, I guess so. You know, because like I said, like I I never saw myself or subscribed to the the kind of mega club. Type mm. of vibe. Maybe if you if you ask me or so, if you put me there, I, I would feel quite uncomfortable because I'm not used to, uh, servicing like those type of audiences as well. You mm -hmm. know, it's always like I mean to me like music is a little bit personal, and I mean often mm. also I think with like big commercial mega clubs like you know or those kind of spaces they also have a certain expectation of like what kind of music you're supposed to play, how you supposed to present yourself, you mm. know, and like underground scenes don't have that. Mm. You know, often like I mean, of course, like for example, Kings of Base. We know it's a bass party, so I want play house music. Oh, sorry, man. Like go <laughs> elsewhere. You know, yeah. it's like there's a theme, right? But what you is know, your definition of bass music? Uh? Mm. it's quite confusing, so right. Oh, I think the spectrum of bass music is quite wide, quite, right? Yeah. It, actually, you know, if you think about it, house music also is quite wide, right? You know, there's Detroit house, there's mm -hmm. deep house tech, you know, and stuff like that. Like you know, anything that's four four, right? But like, I think bass music to me, uh, generally refers to like the the. 
okay, not, not volume lah, but like, you know, basically uh, having that kind of groove, yeah. you know, with that kind of very, the, the sub bass that you hear, mm. you know. Right. Um, yeah, and a lot of them are really like, I think goes back into that whole like, um, uh, dubby, you know, uh, mm. his, the, the history of like black music with like dub and everything. And actually they do say that like, you know, uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, stuff that gets intertwined as well. Like for example, like, Black, we, you know, in the history of black music, there's like dub, there's reggae and stuff, and mm. slam music and all that, right? And then that has extended into house music, but that's extended into jungle and mm. drum and bass and all that. Mm. And all of them are yeah. us somewhat connected also. Yeah, like Man Yo Has Tao, I'm Feng Tao, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Feng Tao, yeah, Feng Tao, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, we need to get a deeper definition of that, yeah. <laughs> Back to back man yao set man. Back to back man yao set. That's the thing, right? Yeah, like yeah, you know, yeah, if you yeah. ask me, right? Uh, so the mega club versus like more intimate setting. Mm. Right? Uh, I guess so, you know. Or maybe it's just the type of music we play, like a bit more left field, not you know, not top 40s, uh, yeah. radio stuff, right? Like, mm. you know, uh, but that's not, that's not to say that it's bad also, you know, mm. it's just like, not it's your just, style. yeah, or just your preference, you know, but I, I mean, of course, I have a lot of fucking guilty pleasures, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> and if you put me in a cut where like, you, you allow me to play like, all the top 40 stuff that I love, I will, mm. I will still do it too, you know? Mm. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, that's, that's the thing also, like, if we ask ourselves, like, what, what is the underground also, you know, like, yeah. Yeah, this is a very interesting thing. So like, yeah. I think it's, for me and Lena, we're trying to like, you know, preach, like get both sides of the Best spectrum of to both come. Worlds. Mm, so mm, like mm. for the underground people, we, we we always had this thinking like, is it because they go to the underground party because it's cool or like what you said, like, it's just like, mm. I just like the vibes, you know, mm, that kind of thing. So mm. like, what, what do you think about it? Uh, I mean, that would be difficult lah because mm. like, uh, like, because we, you know, when you say like, if it's cool and stuff like that, you know, we also have, mm. what's the definition of like, what people think is cool or something, mm. right? You know, like, yeah. I mean, mm. I, I don't really know how to answer that in that sense, right? Like, you know, uh, if people want to come because they think it's cool. And like, basically, uh, like, oh, uh, this one not mainstream, or I like, I want to go, that kind of thing. Oh, wait, long. You pay the ticket, can you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we also need to pay money, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 so yeah. I, I guess there's this uh, interview, I don't know, is it David Guetta or Skrillex? Uh, mm. He said that, right? My job is just to, like, play MP3, you know? But yeah. at the end of the day, right? Um, me and my production team maybe can do 20% of the work, right? But 80% of the energy comes from the crowd. Mm. Yeah. So let's just say, like, for example, uh, John Summit is coming to Zoo, example, right? Mm. And then we wouldn't go to John Summit because it's in Singapore, because nobody will vibe to house music. But mm. if John Summit is playing at Ibiza, we'll go because mm. the vibe is better. Mm. Yeah, so John Summit is not the problem, but the, mm. maybe the audience is the problem. Mm. So would you say something like that, like underground versus mainstream? Like for example, right, if underground DJs host an event at like a underground event versus underground DJs hosting an event at Zook, you know, like the turnout will it be different even though it's the same DJs? Mm, it might be different for yeah. sure, you know, mm. because uh, obviously like with bigger clubs and venues that also have like their own following, right, you know, right. I mean, it might be a good learning moment for like their, their existing audience also to come and like try to discover other sounds that they're not very used to perhaps, mm. you know, and I guess maybe now when we talk about like the term underground, like maybe we will attribute that to like how popular something is. Mm. So if it's not so popular, we call it underground. It, once mm. it starts to become popular, then it's not underground anymore. Yeah. And I guess then we'll call it a sellout, you know, like, <laughs> right, right? You know, like, like yeah, business I mean, techno. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like business techno. <laughs> yeah, this, this is something that only the underground scene people can come up with. You know? like, why, why business techno? <laughs> I just, yeah, 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 next level, bro. Yeah, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, I guess like, um, back to your question, right? Like, you know, sometimes like, like last time when Zook was in a different part of his heyday, you know, when he was still at Jack Kim and stuff, the, it was like a, it, it was considered like a commercial venue, but yet it was also underground, mm -hmm. right? If, yeah. you think, if you think about it, because mm -hmm. they had all these like different rooms that's, that that gave the space and supplied like different types of artists or so, and on on different days, right? Mm -hmm. So if you went on a Wednesday, you or uh, to Future, you knew that you listened to Andrew T. Andrew Chow. Yeah, you know, Andrew Chow, Andrew, Andrew T, Chow. sorry, Andrew Chow, yeah, Andrew <laughs> Chow, you know, and yeah. then maybe on Saturdays, right, they might transform it to, fut uh, to Future becomes like a trans place or something like that, like, mm. you know, they kind of mm. like, um, they kind of mix up like how they want to program these places and stuff, so, yeah. um, it's interesting how like, actually sometimes big clubs like have the power to do that, 
You know? mm. Like, you know, Velvet Underground also, right? Like, wow. it was like, the place where you, you know, people would think, oh, Red Atta is a bit sophisticated. But yet, they also like had nights where we, we did like bass music, you know, which was quite interesting. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. There's quite a lot of, uh, what, Gelang Krang night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Sometimes we got Eragor, sometimes we got Mern. Mm. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, I think the a club has the ability to do that. And I don't think it will really affect like how, how this translates back to like, you know, um, or, or reflects back to like the DJs or like whether the scene was becoming less underground or not, you know? Like, yeah, uh, I think Singapore is still very small in that sense, you know? Mm. And, you know, we could do good like if if a more of these places can provide this kind of support actually because one mm. of the biggest problems we have, especially for small promoters, is that they have very little places to host parties. But now, you know, mm. obviously there's more little Places Pop-ups. popping up. Yeah, like Wild Pearl, we just did an event. Then. Yeah, I saw your Insta story on Wild Pearl. That's quite interesting concept, uh, where you're like DJing in a day, then people come and work out attire. Yeah. yeah, no, we were well, literally started at 6 30 a.m. and it's only 6 30 to about 9 or 9 30. Yeah, and then they had co plungers, you know, so they're trying to promote that kind of like lifestyle like, oh, um, nightlife is not just supposed to be about like being at night and getting drunk. Mm. You can do it in the morning and get a workout before you go to work, you know. Mm. And, and the turnout was actually quite. Well, you know, was unexpectedly quite good. Yeah. But do you all have somebody in front like leading the dance move or something? <laughs> no. <laughs> just freestyle. You know, no, yeah, because I think the people from Wild Pearl, they are quite well known being like a community space, yeah. you know. Mm. So, you know, um, and also like, uh, and it's interesting because they started from like a very small, tiny recording studio to like a space maybe about this size also, you know, where it can fit like about easily... Uh, 30 to 50 people comfortably. Right? They got lighting like, ring, everything. Oh uh, yeah, they just put some, uh, maybe those Taobao lights or what. Like, you know, like, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I saw the, kind of like, yeah. they have some rig. Oh, I don't photos, know, that was actually yeah. uh, the, first, the first time I was there uh, since the last studio yeah, that yeah, they yeah. had. Like, yeah, I know. So, um, yeah, so let's say if people want to do like their own parties like that they feel maybe is not as popular mm. or may not hold so well in a bigger venue, they can start off really, really small. Even mm. if you have 20, 30 people, it's really good enough, you know. Yeah. So I think like uh, places like that are, are really great. Yeah. Mm. Mm. But how do you wake up, Sarah, 6.30? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, my alarm, 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 then my boyfriend was like, he like woke up, he like, I think cannot fight my alarm. My alarm is hard style, eh. Wow. But the raw style one, <laughs> like, <laughs> that kind of. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then you try to put it far away from you, right? So you have to, you have to walk over there to like. Wow, <laughs> <you know? laughs> but wake up to DJ, eh? That's a, that's a first, eh. But what kind of sounds you're playing? Uh-huh. Hmm? What, what what music yeah. you play oh, you for mean, that one? Oh, that for one. The, the oh, you can play anything, you yeah. know. But I mean, uh, I think... Can you imagine Nick, first song you like hard style? Yeah. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very recurring <laughs> theme. Yeah, I mean, of course, start a bit slow. Like, you know, people <laughs> just wake up, right? You know? hey, yeah, that, so that, I think that doesn't exist. Doing, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think like Nick was like, he started, mm. when I came in like much later, like, yeah. like, like an hour mm. later, I couldn't, I couldn't be there at 6.30. Like, I think he was just playing some like jazzy type of stuff, you mm. know. Yeah, I know because they were serving like coffee and uh, also they had like free, yeah, yeah turmeric shots. They had a sponsor. Yeah, yeah. shout out to Muji Botanicals. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. like a yeah, it's like a recurring sponsor for uh, Wow Pearl, right? Yes, yes, yeah, I yeah, think yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. And Wow Pearl, like every Wednesday they have this like community, community night. night. Mm. Yes, and I think that's really good. Every actually. Wednesday, that means like yeah. you can just come in and DJ. Yes, I believe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, or you just go there and hear like you know, and I think these nights are really good because if you think about it, like maybe way back like. Uh, in the 70s or something like the only way that DJs can like hear new, or discover new music right anyway we don't have Spotify all these yeah. right like you know uh, was if people came and like just played it like you yeah, know or, or, or somebody gave them their record and something and if the DJ likes it then he'll play it you know and then it'll get like I think yeah. the Grandmaster mm-hmm. Fresh Grandmaster Flash era, right? It's like yeah. uh, he met friends, right, that come to his garage and DJ for fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Hello. exactly. You uh. know, so like I mean, I think community radios or like community spaces like that with like uh, open jams, like oh. help us also discover new music from new artists and, and new DJs also that yeah. we don't know. You know, like yeah, mm. yeah. We actually did like. I mean, uh, we didn't really have a lot of that, but like, you know, uh, SoundCloud and MixCloud was a really good way for us to like mm. dig, you know, and find these people as well. So, mm. yeah. Another interesting thing, uh, <clears throat> I think is one of your questions, right? Whether when you play an underground show, uh, people 
ask for requests. No? Like, yeah, hey, yeah. You know, I was, as in when we play mainstream, right? <laughs> I was resident for Zoom. Hey, that's what's it all, please. You know, oh, yeah, lah. Yeah, but yeah, for yeah, your, but... I think it's an even higher level. You know? <laughs> Some songs don't even have track title. Oh, I mean, sometimes, like, you know, you, you get like a, a quite a surprise. Sometimes they will come and like ask you for something quite obscure and just like, I don't know that, but I'm going to go find out. Like, you know, but sorry, I just have what's on my laptop or USB or whatever mm, is mm, in mm. my hands now. Mm. But sometimes you'll ask for something like, you know, um, that surprises you, la, you know, because then you know that these people are like music yeah. music hits. Who, Connoisseurs. Yeah, who really, really, you know, like uh, listen to stuff. Uh, but of course, like now nowadays or so, I mean, for even for Kings of Bass, right, there's a lot of music that like, I put out that I wouldn't say is super obscure or so, mm. you know. Like, if you listen to drum and bass enough, you'll know what are the classics, right? Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. sometimes some of these re- requests will come, you know. Mm, mm, yeah. yeah. I think I remember the time I go for Create, ah, going in there, so oh, and yeah, then I was yeah, the yeah. one that requested. <laughs> <laughs> Everything was splitter, like, <laughs> that's stressing. Like, I really play, then you eat it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> I was the annoying one, like, hey, I want to play Taylor Swift, like, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but then the thing is, sometimes that's why, like, I don't entirely, like, reject. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, mm. these kind of requests sometimes because it really can surprise you what kind of stuff they ask for. <laughs> if they really don't have that, if I really don't have that, I just say I don't have one. Yeah. I mean, you can't force me to play something I don't have. Correct. Right? You know, like, yeah. yeah. No, 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 I got people ask to, hey, you go and download now. I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah I just tell them it doesn't work that way. Yeah. Or sometimes the easy way, you just tell it, or uh, management say cannot lock. <laughs> you, you talk to the management first, like, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah you know. Yeah. The, the, the worst one that I had was uh, somebody asked for Leo John shots like short, short, yeah. short you know the song right then I I, I wasn't aware la, I was just DJing then one of the visual girl right tell, tell them to go to the bar and order the shots <laughs> 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 then they go to the bar ask for shots right? then, then afterwards then the bar send back say actually you want the song shot oh, <laughs> they try not to oh that was like super funny oh la. my gosh yeah. oh my goodness actually this reminds me of so like, funny like have you guys ever gotten like people like coming up to your booth and then yeah. asking you for it's not even a request like they ask you like Where's the toilet? You know? yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ask me where's the toilet. Yeah. Got this girl, she come, she didn't even ask me like, like she didn't even check whether this was the bar. She just like, so I say, can I have two G at Tony's? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I just like, my head was on my head. I'm like, Huh? Not, uh, sorry? <laughs> you know, like yeah, and then for and then for a moment I thought of the idea of just taking a fifty dollars, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, same, same, same. I got another whiskey green tea too. Oh wow, Lao, eh. This yeah, one. Guys, it's insane. Yeah, then yeah. Uh, uh pertaining to the underground scene, right? What makes it like underground? And I realize mm-hmm. that underground scene people don't like to admit that they're underground. They're like, no, 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 we're not underground, you know? Mm. Yeah. Hey, really? Yeah, oh. to, to them it's like, oh, this is just that like, like their way of life, you know. Yeah. I guess so, you know, maybe because like, yeah, that's why it's like, it's like the same question. Like, I mean, for me also, it's like, actually what do we consider as really underground? It's like not really popular or something mm. like that, you know? Like, so it's sometimes it's a hard question to answer, I think. Yeah, yeah I think know. it's just maybe, like, maybe, yeah. maybe also it's like not very underground to label yourself as well. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! Wow. Like, wow. Yeah, you know, it's like, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah don't yeah, label, yeah. like, you know, I don't want to have, like, being underground is not having a label and being extra underground is like not even labeling yourself as underground. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. There's, a, there's a guy called uh, Suet. Uh. He was like DJing, he's a mobile DJ and he's like DJing in an uh, underground cave. And sometimes he's kayaking and he's oh, really DJing at the same time. Mm. <laughs> then the, the top comments like, that's the real underground music. <laughs> <laughs> Inside the cave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. Mobile DJing, is it a thing anymore? Like, no, I don't know. I've never done it, man. Like, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Like, yeah. Small but Singapore, I, everywhere cannot ban. Yeah, but I see like, uh, even like the wild poor people, I mean, if you're talking about like DJing and moving around, like, you know, I think they mm. did some like morning, like cycling stuff mm. and then they had like, they were DJing while people were cycling. Oh, I think uh, so. yeah, it's like, you know, just like like along the river and shit. I mean, like it's that. like oh. very popular yeah. in a DNB scene, right? There's one uh, artist, right? He has ah, like bicycle, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. What a lot of people follow, you know. But it's Singapore like, will convert gonna police already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cannot, yeah. cannot, cannot yeah, but yeah, only yeah. do in spin class, eh? Like, uh, spin class. Yeah, 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 stationary yeah, all together. Yeah, yeah. DJ for spin class before. Oh yeah. So yeah. I was quite quite havoc lah. Because everyone. Man, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, I will play the Inquisitive, the Man Yao remix one. Because they ask, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. tell you. Yeah, that's what you said just now when you're playing uh, early morning, right? You cannot play so loud, right? Then imagine you walk into work, because uh, I work there, I walk into work they, at 9 o'clock. Yeah, they don't have Sally, you hear one, pow, 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 like, they, they, wah. Don't, they don't have concept of progression. Don't have, right? They come in just let you die. <laughs> yeah. But that one, I mean, they only have one hour, right? Uh, 45 minutes. 45 minutes, yeah, yeah like, actually, that's true. Can you imagine King of Bass X Absolute Cycle? 
Like bro, 180 <laughs> ppm. <laughs> because like for drum and bass, right? Actually, a lot of the like spin bo- classes. Like and boxing is really yeah. good, man. Like, because be. like it mm. actually has a very good rhythm mm. for mm. yeah for that kind of exercise. Yeah, it's yeah. normally the first song, uh, by the way, the drum and bass song for spin mm. class. Well, you have to do that. You just put on more dance, Actually, actually, the other day also, you know, like uh, one girl, um, my friend who came to one of my gigs last week, like I played Gold Dust at the end. Mm. Mm. And then she says she actually always remembers me um, because she plays that at her spin class as well. Mm. She's a spin instructor. Mm. And I was like, oh, oh yeah, actually, uh, actually uh, DMB is really good for spin. Like, mm. yeah. Mm. Now with all the new like jump up kind of stuff and yeah. then also like DMB like branching out or like, you know, going back into jungle. Mm. There's so yeah. many variety. Yeah, actually, you know, I, I was reading this article just like a couple of months ago, like t- talking about like reflections of post-COVID like clubbing. Mm. And it was, I think, I can't remember, was it like Resident Advisor or like Mixed Mag? And then they were saying like... Um, that they feel that music is getting harder and harder. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. it's now that like, people are like, coming out of their caves, like, you know, to go back into the dance floor, right? Like, mm. people don't want like, just normal 4-4. Vibes. Like, they really mm. want something really hard. Like, a lot of music now, like, that's why like, yeah. all the 180 BPM, like, <laughs> really, like, jump style stuff, like, really works at the moment, like, you know? And it, it's bootleg, like, season already. Like, you know, it's been bootleg season for, for, like, the whole, almost the whole of this year. Like, everybody is just doing remix of, like, oh, and go, all these throwbacks to, like, yeah, the yeah, 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Suddenly, I play, like, uh, ATB, like, at least DJ, all these, wow. right? And everybody is, like, fucking, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, going oh going the gang sign, come on. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I was like, I cannot, cannot chant. Yeah. I cannot do chant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I guess if you look at all the like 360 DMB, uh, UKG, all those like uh, mm. DMB live streams, right? Wow, mm. their DJing is like fucking next level. And yeah. like one song is three songs actually. Then they mash up live. The double like, drop. Fast, oh, come double right. drop. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah, drop yeah. halfway switch. You know, it's really like what you say, like bootleg season. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Now, drum and yeah. bass is actually trending or so, right? Now, yeah. every, my TikTok is always drum and bass, you know? Yeah. That kind of thing. They're yeah. always doing the double drop videos. They always like show the crowd in the boiler room or something like that. It's, it's mad, interesting, eh? right? Like yeah. how TikTok has also, or rather like reels, TikTok mm. has also kind of like revolutionized like the way people listen to music now and yeah. discover music like mm. you know like I'm just like like seeing all these like reels where they had like songs that existed when I was like 15 years old and I was just like oh shit it's like there's a coming back like, a yeah. Yeah, you yeah. know that kind of thing it's insane like, yeah. with TikTok with Spotify now what exactly is underground anyways really, you know like mm. it just seems like nothing is underground but yet there are a group of people that subscribe to a particular vibe mm. yeah mm. and then there's your regular clubbers uh, you know? yeah. I mean Hello. like you said lah, you know I mean maybe it really has to do with like the amount of people that subscribe to that type of music or mm-hmm. you know or are even interested like yeah or how many people would you know um yeah like you know attend those kind of parties as well right? ah, very yeah. interesting thing that i realized right is that um you know all along techno has been like an underground genre quote unquote right mm. but then now right with like a uh, hardware with medics and everybody mm. right like popularizing techno into the big room sound mm. right mm. Um, the underground people still subscribe to techno, you know, it doesn't affect them. Yeah, mm. so I guess it's like, uh, there will be a particular kind of sound or frequency that will be like exclusively reserved for the underground. Mm. And mm. it just cannot permeate into the mainstream. Or, mm. and, you know, I remember last time like techno always had like, there was this thing where techno had no vocals. Then now when you start to watch all the boiler room sets, like, suddenly you got Gangster's Paradise, you know, and <laughs> <laughs> I saw it like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> What's really, this? I actually would really love to hear that that, re- that edit, you know, or something <laughs> like yeah. yeah. So it's like I guess very subjective lah, this underground thing, you know. Mm. I think it's like basically based on what you like compared to what other people like. I mean, at the end yeah. of the day, it's just a it's just a word, right? Yeah, it's, it's just, just really word. how yeah. you feel about you know. But of mm. course, like when we throw that word very loosely around, like mm. you know, especially with music, we say, oh yeah, you know, we 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 do something that's a bit more underground. You you tend to really think it's just more about like you know, the attendance of people and mm. like, you know, how, like, like how, how popular it is and how big the group of people subscribe to it, you know. So, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, whether corporations or maybe whether corporations will actually, uh, you know, will, will buy into it as well, mm. right? Like, yeah. Mm. Like, I mean, for example, people always say like, oh, EDM is very commercial. And, so and, why the spectrum? Yeah, yeah. It, it is right. You know mm. what I mean? But maybe it's like th- that certain type of sound is considered commercial, maybe because it's highly popular, you mm-hmm. know? Like, yeah, you know, even the regular lay person also can 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 easily appreciate it or something like that, you know? Like, yeah. 
I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean it's intelligent or less intelligent or what. Yeah. It's just whether like it sounds popular, right? Like, oh yeah, we'll definitely say that Britney Spears is not underground because she's very popular. <laughs> she's what, a you pop know? star. Yeah, yeah really. you know. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of attendance, right? Like, uh, how, you know, important is it uh, do underground events place on like sales? La? Is it like operate like a normal event mm. or is it really more art music and community focus mm, I think it has to be a ba- it has to be a balance la, right. you mm. know I mean often like why these parties are considered underground so because they are playing like I said maybe mo- music that is a bit less popular you know mm. uh, so even if it has like a high amount of interest as well but you know it's not something that like yeah you know for example you will play in like a zoo, like on a regular you know like mm. yeah uh, but of course like I mean you know being able to um, like make money through like ticket sales and stuff like makes a difference right because di- this allows like Expansion. the organizers yeah the organizers to continue doing what they want to do yep. you know on, it enables them to hold more hold more parties so that there's like other DJs who love the music will can also like Good continue yeah you know, yeah. can continue doing this as well you know like yeah and obviously you know if you want to like have like invited guests once in a while like you know um, then you need to pay them too right yeah, yeah I mean, hotel the, London all this yeah you know the, the disgusting like yeah, but I think this year yeah. is like a huge win for underground music don't you think so mm. you have Kahat uh, work in progress Kahat WIP uh, sponsoring uh, revision music, which mm. is DNB. Mm. You have Heineken sponsoring Boiler Room. Mm. You know, so now uh, brands are like turning inwards. You know, mm. rather than looking at like influencers, they are looking at micro influencers now. Yeah, so. I also think it depends yeah. on the brand. You know, like for example, mm. certain like labels like I like, say card or that like you know they've always been known to quite support like the, like certain type of subculture oh, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know so if they support subcultures like this as well like you know for example certain extreme sports like skate, you know skateboarding and all that like you will you know I, you would think that they will be more attuned to supporting people mm. who are like you know uh, on a smaller scale mm. more like what you're saying grassroots level or what, some Ooh, shit like that grassroots. Like, yeah. grassroots right like yeah yeah, 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 that's why we all like ministers, all right? Yeah. <laughs> then Zushan say now everybody should form their own community, so we are like you know go and go around and shake hands. With <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And and I I mean like if you sponsor like this kind, you know mm. like I guess it's also a huge win for uh, mm. Heineken. Now everybody like wow, that was like the cool brand, you know, Boiler Room, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but for actually, card also. Yeah, but, but but actually Heineken they've been doing. I think they had the, their Heineken Green Room stuff for like quite some quite a long time already remember last mm. time the old zoo then they had like DJ Shadow and stuff like mm. that like yeah you know yeah it's just that like I mean um, now it's like spotlight yeah, yeah you mm. know it's like you know I, I think I mean it's hard to say like, because they are also a big corporation you know yeah. like yeah so their their artistic arm is trying to do stuff like that also but yeah. of course we look on it at a bigger scale like you know people can say like yeah you're still like a capitalist pig or something <laughs> you know like yeah but no way eh. yeah you know actually, no way eh. and it's very interesting because like yeah. I had this like um, conversation with this sort of friend like uh, a sort of friend, sort yeah, friend. Yeah, yeah. because, we, 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 because we, we had a big debate about this and I guess like you know this particular person is not really speaking to me anymore also oh, your oh, friends because shit. of this debate becomes sort yeah, of yeah, but it's basically about like what we understand about like you know the art being manipulated into commercial uh, it, it, into in, into the commercial realm basically Ooh, so, can you like, like dive deeper yeah, this one is like yeah I think uh, it's an interesting topic also like you know so basically like um uh, I think uh, it's a she lah. So basically, she's an artist, right? And then she posted something about uh, doing work for corporates, mm-hmm. and and how like basically the underlying uh, like the underlying tone or premise was that she don't believe that. I mean, she feels that the art is being is not authentic anymore. It's like to deceive people yeah, into yeah. buying. Yeah, you know, or rather, like you know, you as an artist, if you do work for corporates, then your art is not considered authentic anymore because mm. it's become part of this like. Uh, you know, capitalist uh, like um, umbrella, right? And I and I told her I said, mm. but actually I disagree because mm. like uh, I think art is very personal. And if this and and this person like if this person is being represented by like a company that's helping to give them that kind of exposure for them to bring their art forward, right? Mm. Like I don't know what's so bad about that. Mm. You know what I mean? And personally, it's very privileged artists that are able to say I can keep my art like super non-commercial mm. because maybe they don't have financial struggles and mm. stuff but a lot of like uh, independent artists like they, they need this kind of um, platform you know yeah. small so little boost here and there financially yeah, of course like yeah. you know I mean 
if there was a chance that like I can yeah so back to you know like when you say like oh if like Cartier wants to hire me of course I, I would I would go for it what? It's, it's so great for the resume and it's not like they're lousy clients yeah. you know, and everything like, like you know like so yeah. far a lot of not too like, shabby not too shabby yeah, not too shabby like, <laughs> clients are like you know, really pleasant to work with actually you know like yeah um, okay like if, if not pleasant I won't tell you lah but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, but it's yeah lah I mean like like let's be realistic yeah. right you know yeah so like just because you're an artist and you, you want to you know be have some you know you have the yeah. kind of pride with your art and everything but you also got like touch your heart and ask yourself lah like you know I mean how sustainable it is or so and then we mm. come back to that also right yeah, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, everything has to be a fine balance of course you know there's no I mean like uh, there's no argument that if you want to keep like your art like really protective uh, really protected by your own self and you know you feel that like it should be unsullied in that mm, sense, mm, right? Mm, by like corporates or what. But it doesn't mean that other people can't do it, you know? Like, yeah. And if you do that, you might not be able to feed yourself with your art. Yes. Then you might have to subscribe I mean, to a day job. And then... And you then, are technically selling out. And all <laughs> people people just quit doing art. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's like, why. I mean, the, 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 I mean, one of the, the greatest, like, uh, very sad art Art, uh, artist stories is Van Gogh, right? Like, he mm-hmm. didn't make any money through, throughout his lifetime. Mm. You know, until he had to freaking eat his own pains, you know, and stuff like that. Like, he actually really suffered a lot because nobody wanted to buy his art, you know, mm. like, yeah. And we can't, we can't let artists, like, you know, uh, Enough suffer. of yeah. the struggling artist era. No, <laughs> but really, it's like, let's be frank, la, you know, like, you know, this is like, yeah, this is the, this is honestly like IG, TikTok, all these like artists, right? Like, please milk it for all it's worth. You know? <laughs> Go make that freaking dough, girl, boy, whoever. Like, <laughs> girl, boy, <Yeah>. there. <laughs> Everyone. Wait, like, really? You know, like, there's no shame. You know, like, I want to yeah, ask you this one. Let's not subscribe to that, like, you know, yeah. struggling artist type anymore. Like, yeah. Very, very true. Very well said. You know, <laughs> you know the Doctor Strange, there's this. Um, you know, Doctor Strange and then he uh, got the fat guy and then got the black guy. And then the black guy is like, he believes in absolute good. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and then un- until he becomes absolute evil, you know. So mm-hmm. there's like, there's uh-huh. no absolute black, uh, absolute white. There's always the gray area that, yeah. you know, there's the right perfect balance. La. Yeah, I'm so happy for yeah. friends when I see their work being published like on a world stage. It's freaking amazing, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Like, I mean, if you have, like, the privilege to be as an independent artist, to, to keep yourself very independent, great. But, you know, if you have the opportunity to work with other people, why not, right? Everybody is different also, what? You know? right. yeah. yeah. Don't tell me I'll never work. But, like, of course, I, I, I'm, I'm part of the Nike Catalyst team. But don't tell me I'll never, <laughs> I'll never work with Nike just because, you know, I, I feel like like there are some mega, you know, like MNC or what. No, I love them. You know, of course, I work with them, right? Like, mm. yeah. You know, so how, like, like you know, how do you want to... Like, how do you place yourself, you know, in 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 this kind of uh, situation, right? Like, yeah, I don't know how you're, how, what, what do you consider yourself, like, independent or what, but, like, yeah. Mm. Everybody needs to survive, lah. I know. guess that's what reverie is, because we are, like, trying to show both sides, right? Mm. Like, yeah. the exceptionally underground, exceptionally mainstream, exceptionally protective, exceptionally commercial, right? There, there's, like, a fine balance in between, lah. Mm. Which is why, you know, we we uh, engage in conversation, we play their music mm-hmm. of people that we truly believe that is dope. Mm. Yeah, and then people like look at us like them luan, like you all like everything. Uh, but because we love it, you know, oh, that it should be that way, you know. Actually like humans just love to pigeonhole people yeah. into little boxes and say that you should be only playing this or you should be only doing that. Yeah. yeah. But actually you can do whatever you want, you know. E- yeah. Easier for them to like, you know, not overload, uh, I mm-hmm. guess so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people shouldn't complicate things that much. Yeah, I just like to own. play music and listen to music. You That's know, it, why you must come and, and tell and, me. And you can play whatever you want. Yeah. You know? If today you want to play your man, yeah, then tomorrow you also <laughs> can play something else, right? Yeah. Right? Right? yeah. Play play, house. Maybe you play yeah. Malay version, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Malay version, hustle. Like, yeah, 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 you play some sort of like. The king drum change to Kong Pang. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Then yeah. the only one drum beat only. Yeah, okay. Anyway, there's this new mm. function, uh, chat GBT infused into Canva already. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Like how? I barely found out today. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, it's really taking over. I mean, like, to be frank, also, I think it was a... It's, na- it's a natural progression of technology, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm. I just feel, like, obviously, I have... I don't have the answer to, like... You know, sometimes people have asked me, you know, oh, what's your, what's your industry opinion about like how AI is taking over design and stuff like that. And I'm just like, yeah, it seems like, 
it was something that was going to come at some point you know yeah. things are always getting smarter and smarter and all that and like I think in some in some good ways AI is a really great way to like accelerate what people want to express mm. you know um, you know I, and of course like sadly uh, we don't want to take away the, the technical portion of it right you know yeah. but I think yeah there's no there's no answer to like how we can stop this you know or, or, what, or whether it's good or bad it's just there but I think there should be like I think there should be agencies that like governance that, that yes that, mm. that govern the ethics of like what is right and wrong usage right you yeah, know and yeah, that's yeah. just probably the one of the bigger solutions that we can think about now right? there's a recent one shit I forget what's the app name already but the the one where everybody changed their profile pic to an AI version. Oh, Lensa. Lensa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Then mm-hmm. they got quite a lot of a huge backlash right, for that one. Yeah, I mean yeah. like how you can put yourself in different scenarios or what and suddenly you become Little Mummy or some shit, right? Uh, or yeah. something like that. I actually I never I, I didn't I didn't um generate myself. Yeah. I saw so many versions of it that I was just like, okay, I, I don't really want to do it. Underground, underground, underground. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I, I don't know, I see like yeah. I'm gonna subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be a like you know like a, yeah, yeah. Like a copy of a, a Lenza mermaid. Right? <laughs> My then basics. I say what everyone do. I also want to. Do. <laughs> I say what I like cool. Ah. <laughs> Fuck man, I did it on the first day man. Yeah. I, I, I found then I send everybody a link. Huh? I send instruction manual. Yeah. Huh? How to do. I all. see what everybody so do. He's the one that asked me to do. I also do lor. I mean like I supposed to dig trends or you know. Yeah. yeah that's my job you know. <laughs> yeah. I go and follow. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean like for uh, AI right it will mm. impact like design I think the earliest and then you will do mm. music next and then mm. next you will do movies you know mm. so we all technically in the same boat la. so I don't know what is like your coping mechanism or like how, how do you like future proof yourself because like for example you see COVID right mm. why well, you like killed 90% of the DJ population you know mm. yeah and mm. for people like us at Zook right wow, mm. we had to pivot net like we have to pivot like so crazily right you wouldn't even believe it when I say like you have like Jeremy Boone and all of us we are like waiters mm. we are like we, we wash cups you know we, we mm. learn how to do live streaming so many things that we learn how to do la. Mm. so with mm. the dawn of the AI age right how do you see yourself like future proofing yourself mm. Mm. I mean I think that brings, brings uh, me back to like what I said earlier about like career mm. like you know having multiple like careers or side hustles and stuff like mm. like that I mean, even from whatever I study, it it's not what I'm actually doing now, you know. Mm. And the thing is, we nev- we need to think that our job will never be forever there for us, right? You know, and yeah. like I said, COVID has taught us that like it can just change, and then for a very long time, you cannot do what you have done for years, you know. Yeah. 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 And I mean, I think unfortunately we have to try to tune our minds to the fact that like change happens and maybe this time around we can be a little bit more prepared for it. But I mean of course case specifically uh, touching on your subject of AI like I I don't really have a problem with what it is right now unless like yes like it's like ethically it's governed like in a specific way that like people can use it in in, I mean it can be very helpful you know Mm -hmm. I think like yeah Um, but I think specifically for design like I don't know like I said I also don't know how long I'll be a designer you know like Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah I think like I'll probably I'll probably answer that better, like, if it starts to take over my job, you know, <laughs> but like, um, but yeah, I think right now, um, I don't know, I, I, I'm not really afraid of, like, what it will do for my work, right. like, you know, currently, I'm, or at least, like, for what I'm doing in fintech, like, I don't think that right. is uh, something that, that will affect, like, entirely what I do. Um, I guess your one also got some client facing thing yeah. actually not so much actually not so much, uh, uh. but it's, it's mostly like yeah like s- security stuff you know because I do all this and I mean for example when we think about uh, experiences right like of how people use things like you know that one actually requires like research of like understanding what's the logic of like a human doing this you know mm. so very unlike AI where we need to put this logic into them to know for them to know what it will ha- what will happen uh, a human still needs to do that. So if we, of feeling. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, we don't know how people uh, like use stuff or react to stuff, you know. That's why we do research, yeah. right? You know, yeah. I, I learned somewhere from UIUX, right? It's like if you, you know, the orange juicer machine, mm. right? And then when you press the button and then it grinds the juice, right? And then there's uh, sound, right? It's actually like a fake sound that they generate to increase the satisfaction level. That's very interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, yeah. it's not 
the machine doesn't sound when you cut up an orange, it doesn't sound like zzzz, what, right? Or, mm, yeah. Mm, so mm. that was like something that they implement. Uh, I I read somewhere. I don't oh, know that's where. really really interesting. Yeah. Right. So but I thought yeah. maybe it, it will be something similar. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, but the thing is that like, AI will only. I mean, if the AI were to solve resolve problems with like human experience, first they need to know what is the experience and mm. then what is wow. the problem and then understand the solution, right? You know. And mm. at, the, at the end of the day, you still need to feed them information enough for them to be able to think of a to like pass a, a Turing right? test. Yeah, exactly. Turing yeah. test. Yeah. What? Yeah. Wow, they're all my fuck. Yeah, yeah. 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 Shit, exactly. Man. Like, yeah. Okay, so like with the future being so uncertain, right? Mm. How can like companies, right, keep employees loyal? Because now, right, it's like in the day and age where it's like mm. job hopping, you know? Mm. People are just like mm. work two years somewhere and then job hop, job hop to get a better opportunity, mm. pay raise. That's how they do it. But last time back in the day, it's like, wow, I worked 20 years in this company, my company take care of me, you know? Yeah, but yeah. I, I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, for me, I feel companies have the ability now to like, you know, uh, adapt. Like, give or yeah, adapt and you know, give like, uh, the like give a kind of welfare to their employees that they feel actually helps actually helps them. Okay, Beyond so for, money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like okay, like for example, like you know, uh, having like enough like, like uh, vacation days. You know, like, yeah, ah. I mean, as, as you grow older, you realize, like, you don't have enough time. So, if you have vacation, more vacation days, it's actually very appreciated. Do you see know? the mm. recent Taman interview? Say that, uh, I think, like, working hours is too long. Uh. Not that like I can do anything about it, but I just think that it's too long. It is, because... <laughs> it is the beginning of the conversation, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a very micromanaging type of, uh, yeah. like, attitude to think that, like, oh, if, like, I can keep you in the office for, like, eight to nine hours a day, I can see what exactly what you're doing. That means you don't have trust in your employees, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. You don't I mean, believe in productivity. Yeah, you know, uh, like, honestly, if, if, let's say you, like, a company that, like, wants to hire you, right, decides to give you, like, much more vacation days than like any of your ex companies ever give. Gives you a very good pay raise, you know. Uh, tells you you have uh, also mental health days. Tells you that you have a budget for learning. Mm. Tells you you have like all these like different things. Would you feel loyal to them? Of course you would because you feel wow you really value me, wah. You know so. Companies shouldn't feel scared about like trying to throw their resources at their employees because their employees will work harder for them. You yeah. know, like yeah. And most other companies won't do it, so you win. I mean, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know, like, yeah, but of course I cannot speak for these companies. <laughs> I can understand some of those small companies, maybe they need they got budget and stuff Correct. like that. Yeah. Right, you yeah. know. But big companies, like, you know. Now everybody just striving for like work life balance, lah. Yeah, basically. Yeah, and then they always know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean after yeah. like doing like all these like long hours with like like advertising, agency life, right? Then I actually um, just before I joined this current company that I'm working in, likewise, like, like the the day I ended my previous job, right, and and like I mean I'm not also blaming them lah. It's just that like I felt that I I worked so long and so much in a day, and especially during COVID, I wasn't really taking care of myself in that sense. I just keep working and working and working because you don't really think of the time. Right? Sometimes like mm. like five a.m. I'm still working. You know mm. that kind of thing. Like I don't design sleep. life. Yeah, yeah, you know because to me it's like yeah I can sleep. Yeah, I wake up anytime. Right? You know like yeah, but then you yeah. still wake up and go for your calls and stuff. So yeah, and then on the last day I ended right. Fuck, I had a panic attack. You know like because I was just like I just couldn't get rid of like all the anxiety of like working like. Because like it's habit really, right? Yeah, yeah like, yeah. like so constantly day after day, day after day, even I, the weekends I, I, and stuff I, I, like I that, you know. Man. Yeah, and then you realise that you can't take like the energy back, you know. Like, yeah, and I think I spent like a bit of time after that just trying to, to recover and tell myself how to relax, like, you know. And, and after that, I told myself I need to be in a place where they allow me to also do the things I want to do, especially when I started DJing again, it's like, you know, and mm. I wanted to go back to school, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. When you DJ, right, mm. does your company know about it? Yes. <laughs> wow. even, they even got me to DJ at their, at their staff party. And their staff party is like a mega festival. I guess that's the way. It's fucking insane. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so, so later, I, I show you all the, later I show you all the videos. Eh. And so my friends are like, like, are you in like some European festival? I was like, yeah, it's my staff party. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, it's like those global party, right? Then they have this fucking huge festival. Yeah. I guess that's oh. the way to go, like if you have a day job, right? And then you're like super upfront with whatever you are doing. Mm. But and, and but the thing is, they must be okay with it, right? Yeah, yeah. I think like uh, you know, for fintechs like them, like also they came, they had this like startup mentality. They love people who like do. Oh, they love it. Yeah, yeah like, you know, oh. when I told them also, like, I was teaching, you know, and I would love to continue teaching as I were, they were like, okay, you know, uh, why don't you, like, maybe commit one day 
like of the week for teaching but you know I mean maybe we take half a day and then the other half you make sure you finish all your work lah you know so that was, <gasps> yeah so that was the agreement what? Like, wow. my so now you work four and a half days a week oh uh, no lah I still but you know I extend my day lah you know oh so, yeah. the so same in, in hours to sub, but this, it's just that yeah you know uh. I, I, I teach in between those hours that I'm supposed to work but I start like a bit later and I talk I spoke to my lead and I told him about it at the time. Then he was like, okay, you know, like, yeah. so people like my team known to not touch me during the, the hours that I teach and then oh, I only get like, like change up the wise now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're really, Crazies, really nice yeah. yeah. Okay, so back to DJing, yeah. because you're playing such a wide genre of music, mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. also when I sp- spoke to uh, Durio uh, mm-hmm. and she's Serene. like, mm-hmm. she's literally playing hip hop, then D and B and Afro for our radio show that kind yeah. of thing. So, how how do people like uh, hire you? Like what what is their you know? Oh, I mm. think I think right. Like okay, so if we you know we if we have to split it you know in a way where it's like all the like more underground like or like or maybe more like music scenes like mm. you know nightlife scenes or music scenes or party scenes and mm. then there's corporate right. So like uh they. So I think when people hire me in corporate, like for example, brands like yeah, you know, like like Nike or uh, luxury brands like Cartier, Gentle Monster, all that kind of stuff. Mm. Like, I mean, I do have uh, like, like not really a portfolio, but press kit. Yeah, like I do have a press kit that that shows like oh, I've done like these clients and stuff like that. But I think mm. most of it is just like because. I work with like multiple PR event agencies mm. and then they trust me and then they know you know mm. so it's a, a, a mark more like word of mouth or something like that yeah, but you yeah, know yeah, of yeah. course on my Instagram I do post that I've done these events mm. but yet I, and, and then yet I also post like oh I've done events in like other clubs as well mm. and I think they appreciate this kind of diversity you know like yeah and they don't really like uh, pigeonhole me into like oh you have to play yeah. like X type of music and stuff like that you know although like I feel that for events usually for brands like it's very you you it's very specific like you know what kind of music you're going to play already like mm-hmm. for example like yeah if I play for like Cartier or this you know it's going to be a bit more sophisticated so you yeah. might probably play a like, house music or deep house or something like that right play for Nike a bit more urban so you play hip hop lah or you play mm-hmm. like you play jungle drum and bass or this also is okay one will they you say know? that they want specific songs sometimes it no yeah. not songs actually if they if they do want songs it's only if there is a program Oh, like yeah, a walkout. Then, yeah, if there's a program, mm. they're unveiling something like, example, I did Mercedes and then they have their own song, that kind of mm. thing. Like, but usually, they will include that in their own programming already. So, uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. But they will just give you the general brief and a guide mm. and then you Correct. Know, like, just yeah. go about it. Lah. Yeah, sometimes, like, let's say, if you do like other type of lifestyle brands, you know, they might have a certain theme. Yeah. So, maybe they will ask, you know, hey, you know, you know, in your expertise, like, can we curate a specific list? And then I'll be like, if, if let's say, it's music I really don't play. I, I sometimes will just say, oh, actually, I, I don't have this kind of music and it's not really my style. So maybe I can recommend someone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Stick to the branding more important. Yes, yeah. example, like, for example, you, you know, you guys, um, like, uh, and, and also because I don't want to deliver something I cannot deliver, yes, you yeah, know? So, I like, guess. you know, uh, DJ Jess, right? You guys interviewed her also, right? Yep, yep, yeah. Yep. And she's actually a very um, experienced DJ in that sense because she plays, like, quite a number of corporate clients as well, you know? Mm. And she played, like, plays for quite a big, like, big commercial, val- uh, like, venues, you know? So, like, mm. uh, she's actually, super, like, certain um, projects I've had, like, let's say I cannot do it, I will pass it to her mm. because I'll be like, you know, you can do, like, this kind of, like, um, like a big big room like uh, EDM type of music like which is yep. quite suitable for this client yeah. take it you but know, not like, part yeah, of like, your branding so I mean yeah. uh, and, and and I just maybe I don't know the songs yeah. you know and if I don't know the songs that I won't, I'm not convincing so ah, I don't feel, to sell the experience yeah yeah you know and sometimes you have to you stand there for like 2-3 hours and 2-3 hours I actually like oh my god I don't really know the music so how to play you know like you're yeah. not vibing so. yeah yeah exactly yeah. you know you also want to play stuff that you enjoy right you yeah. Know, so. I, yeah I see that, that your insta story also you are like DJing in some restaurant like a small cafe and then you were like extending your set or something mm. I can't remember that, yeah. but yeah, I have played like yeah, uh, and then like, like you know, you can feel that mm. okay, wow, you know, you're like freestyling, and then the flow is there. Like, like potato head, all these like yeah, 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 they yeah, have their, yeah, their yeah. own nights and stuff. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Rumors, uh, no, not rumors. Uh, TBC actually Tanjong Beach Club also yeah. like they have their own vibe also. Like yeah, it's mm. quite fun. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. when when you like um when it comes to char- charging them lah, not gonna say specifics lah, mm. but like uh, well, do you have like a very like uh, fixed rate like 
Mm. Like for example, like corporate, right? It's like that. Mm-hmm. Then like for gigs, right? There's like this rate. Yes, hundred yeah. percent. Because very fixed, ah. Uh. Yeah, I mean, like for example, it's really it really depends on the party, right? Like if I'm playing for like a friend, like you know, who do like like say Wild Pearl or like mm. Kings of Base, all these, you know, we we are supporting like nights that one don't often happen. Two actually may not make like a huge amount of money compared to like a big mega club, you mm. know. So, or uh, and and um, like obviously you know the kind of rates that we charge to like corporate clients is very different, one. Yes. You know, yeah. because this kind, I mean, these clients with their own events also. I mean, they have like all these like, um, like, like influencers and all these like celebrities who come and all that. Like they have like a a very large budget, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I mean, obviously, it's 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 a different type of work, lah. I feel like yeah. Um, a different type of audience also, right? You know, yeah. So bars will have a certain type of rate. Like independent promoters, like really different certain type of rate as well. Like I've even played gigs where like I I play I play a set and and I just told them you know just give me whatever you can because mm, I just want to support, support you. Support movement. Yeah. yeah. I just want to support you. I know you guys like just starting out and then yeah, yeah, or sometimes yeah. I'll be like you know see how much you get guys get at the end of the day then you'll see how much you can pay mm. everybody else lah you know as long as everybody get token right because I've been there before. Yeah. You know sometimes I our tickets Start are really damn bad and yeah. then we just we don't make anything back we just give whatever you know like uh, yeah. Correct, correct. But yeah, correct. But, but corporates they have a budget, so yeah, just yeah. and I feel that like that's where um, like it's it's still considered like it's at like it's work work right you mm. know like you wouldn't say that like you're you're really so much more of an artist rather than yeah. like a, a vendor and a, a vendor, vendor correct. Or, like an yeah. entertainer at that point of time so correct. you should be really paid for the work that you're delivering yeah. right you mm. know. So yeah, like between me and Serene, like when it comes to rates, like we have a tier card, like a rate card, and we always keep it the same. Mm. We we believe that like every everybody should also be around this rate, like you know. And um, between me and her, we will always charge the same. Mm. So if people go and ask her, so she will say I charge I charge the exact same rate, and then we will tell them like we charge everybody like this. Yeah, collective, yeah. my yeah. yeah. So like you know, if I have like other um, DJs who come and ask me the rate the rate card as well, I will just share with them. I mm. said like. I believe like clients can pay you this much. Mm. I mean, sometimes people also ask like, oh, but I'm not so experienced. So how can I ask for such a rate? And I'll be like, but you get there, what you know? So brush up your portfolio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I just said like, you know, um, okay, this is the rate I will charge. But if you want, you can low lower a bit from there. Mm-hmm. You know, but mm-hmm. I I'll tell them like, don't don't go too far, lah. You know, I mean, you don't want to spoil the market for everyone. Correct. Yeah. Then I yes. that when you get more experience, and then clients come and ask you, say, hey, I I used to pay you this. Mm. Then now, now you charging me this, you know that kind mm. of thing, like Correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of spoiler market, you know, time, remember I tell you mm. about this guy? He charged twelve dollar per hour. What is McDonald? Yeah, have it. Yeah, like recently, like a lot of like McDonald like fifteen per hour. I don't know, bro, yeah. but that was just madness, lah. Yeah, yeah, madness, yeah, yeah. 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 got people. Parks, yeah, because we talk about like over, over hey, selling, right? Got people undercutting also. Cannot even cover the taxi fare, home man. Cannot. You yeah. pay for you DJ for your taxi. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand yeah. Yeah. But okay. Then the thing is you see, uh, since red cards are so like private and confidential kind of things, uh, you only share with like close friends mm. or people that are interested to do business with you. Uh, mm. How do we like kind of realign the whole scene, you know? Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's but a challenge, you know. Yeah, I mean for me, like when people ask me, I don't mind sharing. Mm. You know, like I I feel like I have a pretty um, but then that's the thing it's also my rate you know and I, I will share it with friends who I know like they are playing similar gigs as well but the thing is like maybe for other people like it might be quite different so you know, that's, that's also one of the reasons why okay for example I'm, I may not say it here because mm. there could be RDGs that have a much higher rate card than me that yeah. I don't know of and that maybe I might be spoiling their mm. you know yeah, I, I'm not yeah, sure yeah, yeah. but I, I feel that I'm, you know for me I feel I'm charging a pretty okay rate you know yeah. so if people if people ask me then I will share it with them and but, it helps yeah. by being in a scene for so long yes. you have like personal conversation with so many people I, I you can people, average out yeah I think people shouldn't be scared to share what they do but even if they don't really want to be too honest about it they should say I think you should be charging around here based you on know? your experience like just by like just 
like you know consulting right you mm. know even if you're really not comfortable with sharing like what you get like you know just say you know if someone asks you just say okay i think this is a good amount for you based on your experience based on your level you know based mm. on the client you know so it helps them think also and develop like their own way of like getting the rate themselves like right, 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 yeah right, right. you know I, i did a tiktok that did pretty well that uh they asked how much how how much djs are being paid and then i i kind of like put a few disclaimer right? and then i just gave them a, a figure uh, And then I just write, okay, all the rates are here. And then I just write everybody's rates. So mm. like literally from A tier, B tier, C tier, regional to mm. local, right? Mm. How much agar agar? Then wow, I got quite a lot of like engagement, ah. And mm. uh, you know, most people seem to agree. Mm. Yeah. So I guess mm. like this is like valuable information that um, you know people deserve to know, like Also good for the scene as yeah. well. Right? Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because also, mm. let's say if I spoke to someone else who's like. T- the rate card is higher than me. It also gives me an understanding of like, oh, okay, you know what kind of clients do hire you, you know? So, mm. like, maybe time to up your own rate also. Yeah, is it possible to up my own rate? Then that means that everybody else also can up it a bit also. Yes. Right? You know what I mean? Like, yes. yeah, and everybody gets to benefit. But I understand like how, I mean, especially for people who do a lot corporate DJ work here. Like, I mean. Uh, yes, there's quite a number that go around, but yet also it is a fairly saturated market, right? You know, so like I I can understand how people might be afraid that like oh you know um maybe the client will choose them yeah. right, uh, right, above right, right. above like you know yeah no choose others above them you know like and yeah. when you say that it's like a super saturated market, right? Do you feel pressured to be more than just a DJ to start becoming a a designer a a music producer and everything to level up your game or you just stick to DJing the end? Yeah, I mean like I said, you know, I realize I'm not a very good creator. Like I love I love music and I you know of course like like have some stuff that I made like when I was younger, but like mm. right now it's just like. Also, we don't have that much time, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I I feel that like I've I've thought of wanting to make music for a really long time, but I really need to sit down and learn, right? Like how to do it if I really want to be good at it, you know. Yeah. And then when I think to myself, like, do I have the time? Then I'm like, no, no. There's actually a lot more things that I find more important to me at this moment right now. Yeah. Yeah. I rather deliver a better DJ experience than like, you know, I mean, unless I give up. Half of my half of the day of my day job and like you know yeah but what at least one thing's done my <laughs> master so now I got a bit more time yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely you know, like, man yeah, who knows like, maybe next next yeah. year I'll come up with my own AK sound original yeah. Yeah, let's yeah, go yeah, yeah, album, man like yeah yeah so maybe we can uh, talk a little bit about bow bow please because mm. other than Ida girl you also have another project mm, yeah. yes so um maybe we can talk a little bit about the sound and the art direction mm. you know yeah Baba was a uh, I mean we. I mean, right now we currently don't. We are not really active, you know. But because we we formed it just maybe like a year or two pre COVID and stuff, you know. Mm. Uh, me and Serene and another guy Eden, mm. we just basically had hot pot. Eden, Eden, yeah. Eden. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, yeah. I think I know off track. Got DJ mm. off track one. Is it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 He does a lot of events as well. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. So um, because we, we basically had hot pot and then we were just like, oh, should we just do a like a like a Like a base night together. That means that like we have, like like in in the night we you know there's people who like for example Nest that does revision and mm. then uh there are I think at the time there was only revision, yeah. The that Arisha was also doing a lot of DMB stuff, but she didn't have kings or base yet. So mm. anyway, like you know we didn't want to do like a DMB night. We wanted a night that like can go anywhere from like. House like, to base to yeah, like you know UKG to like what we understand stand about like dub and everything. Mm. So can play like one forty dubstep. Uh, you can play Vogue ballroom. You know anything along those lines of like really deep dark heavy bass. You yeah, know yeah, yeah. like yeah. So so we didn't want to kind of like constrain ourselves to one genre. Uh, and also you know we also revision. I mean they're our friends. You know so we will work with them on like oh if you have a night on this day then we don't cross law like yeah and we just we oh. try not to play music that is like yeah. too close to them as well yeah, yeah and then sometimes we will just be like yeah come over lah we will just like hang out together also so mm-hmm. yeah um we did that for a bit you know we had a couple of nights and it was quite fun the, I mean but I would say like pre COVID the attitude towards like under like you know anything that is like uh yeah even like dubstep and stuff like that was like quite lukewarm you know. The it was very niche, but mm. yeah, yeah. We had a couple of people we invited. Like uh, then we had like uh, Joe Nice. He's like this um, American uh, dubstep DJ. Yeah, and then mm. uh, we also had like Danny Squilla, and then mm. a few times. I mean, with Adigo, we did try to do like Madam X. You know, so a bit mm. more like dubby type of stuff. But 
yeah, you know, I mean, um, maybe like 50 people, that kind. Mm, like very, yeah. like, wow per, you know. Yeah, yeah, that kind something of like that, like, yeah, 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 yeah intimate, you know. Intimate. Yeah. yeah. But of course, we always try to pay off everybody, like, you know, no matter what we made and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. And um, That's the way, like, that's the way. Yeah, yeah. and, uh, yeah, like, I mean, it was fun while it lasted, you know. Mm. We just made some t shirts, gave it out to friends, so be make so much money, yeah. like that. Yeah. What's the art direction? You know, oh, before? I mean, because uh, actually, me and Serene thought about it first. Then we pulled Eden in after. Mm. So, like, I don't know what we were talking about. Actually, I was just asking her the other day, why did we call it, like, BB or, like, Pow Pow? Maybe because <laughs> we were, like, we were saying like, oh, there's two of us, so there's like, it's like, it's like twins, you know, like, uh-huh. it's like double trouble, that kind of thing. So we say like, oh, like, like, um, baby is like, pow pow or something like that, like, yeah, you know. So then I just started doing a logo with like, pow pow law. And we yeah. wanted something a bit like, like got some Asian Chinese roots, that uh-huh. kind of. Like the calendar, <laughs> oriental. Yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah you know, so like, yeah, and then look like yeah. Mahjong Tao like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, so yeah. just now, I, I like briefly ask you this, right, so, mm-hmm. um, I guess it's like for our own sake, lah. What, you know, <laughs> yeah. what, what does a good event poster convey? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah like I said, lor, like honestly, it's gonna tell you, gonna tell you the venue, who's the artist, how much it is, and the, and the time, all like yeah. But it's then funny, time, all, you know. Like, we we yeah. have all these in our poster, right? People can still forward us the poster, say, hey, bro, when you are, when you playing, ah, uh, what what date, ah? Uh? Yeah, uh, lor, that's why. Uh, and then, then you realize that people don't really look at posters that much, and then you have to yeah. like repeat everything in your caption. I resend. Uh, yeah, 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 I, I yeah. screenshot. I resend as a circle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, I know. But then, then we also said, right? Like nowadays, posters also don't really need to like show the person's face anymore. Like, yeah, yeah, correct, you correct, know? correct, correct. Yeah, you just need their name, and you just need if the if it's a hit. Like, just put BBK already, you know. So, another thing about the poster, right, is like if you see, right, recently there's this trend of like everybody's poster look like illustration art, like you know, right? Yes, it's a, yeah. it's a, it's a like trend. The, like, Northeast Social Club, all mm-hmm. this, like, yeah. Oh man, yeah. like Natasha, I think like she does all the Natasha Hassan, she does all the stuff like behind it, like she's so good, man. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. all of the posters are so good, like, yeah. So, do you think it's Im- more important to follow the trend or be ahead of the trend? Or like stand out in some ways. Well, I think. Or just was, describe your events vibe. I think nowadays, right? Like when we talk about trend, it's it's just like everywhere, you know. Like um, mm-hmm. like like it's very interesting. I think as long as it really conveys like the type of vibe that your party has, you know, or like the kind of personality that your organizers is like. For example, you know, mm. like Endless Return, Basi Temple, all that. You know, mm. they have all these like very kind of like sharp, like like um, how do I say? The graphics look a bit dark, mm. you know. And they got a lot of, like metal, metal, chrome mm. type of chrome. stuff, like you know, yeah. like yeah, it's kind of like almost like a bit like sophisticated, a bit sexy also, and like BDSM style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. You know that kind. Like it's yeah, you know it's um. It's, it's, a thing, it's flashy you know? yeah. but in like very like you know and then slightly has that kind of like slightly old 90s like font vibe that kind mm. and like it does say a lot about their parties right mm. I think you know and the, about like the kind of personality they have and then you go to like North East Social Club where you know it's like very illustrative so mm. it, it looks quite fun as well and all that and I think it like does sh- show the personality of the music and the mm. kind of uh, people they bring into their parties like yeah you yeah. know so I think as long as I mean, like, like, yeah, I, I, I think what you're talking about also maybe has to do with taste, like, you know, if, yep. yeah, I mean, trend, people can subscribe to many types of trends at once, but I think you still have to have taste, you know, mm. like, mm. I mean, I'm sure you, you've seen some, like, um, posters where, like, maybe they try to subscribe, to subscribe to a certain trend, but then, Maybe the design not very really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, this yeah. one the design not so good. Like, that kind of thing. Like, mm, okay. But they, they yeah. try to make but, the underground. But then you say, but yeah. I see what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They try to copy the underground because it's cool, but you go down there, they play cool play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's the thing. Your poster yeah. has to show, like, what the party is about, right? You know, mm. because it will sell what it's going to be. Mm. Yeah, so if you don't. Yeah, so if you misrepresent it also, then it's different, right? Yeah, I can imagine you put Britney Spears in your poster and then you never even play one Britney Spears song. You know, like, mm. this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah very yeah. true. Mm. Okay, then uh, maybe we can uh, close this off, right, with uh, what would be your biggest dream as a designer or uh, or art or, or DJ because you say you're not creator but Play more Tao curator. Tao and the uh, I guess so oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah you see one uh? <laughs> yeah wow I don't know man like I never thought yeah. about it I never thought about that that much like yeah. hmm yeah but I know oh man I'm gonna reveal my age like on 
on camera, but like in two more years I'll be forty. So like Hey, you know thirty yeah. is the new twenty. Yeah, but it's like, yeah. you know, like, when you're going to reach 40, right, you really start to think about, like, oh, yeah, what, what is really important anymore, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, not to yeah, say yeah. that, like, oh, like, I don't have any dreams anymore, like, oh, my dreams have died with me, you know? That, <laughs> like, it's just different, you know? Like, yeah. take life in a very different, in, yeah. in kind of, like, different way. Like, you know, there's still things that I want to do, obviously. You know, I want to continue doing music for as long as I can. Mm. You know? I want to have be able to have the energy to still do these things like you know of course like in a couple of years if I decide to get married have kids and then like you know where I bring my baby to like the club you know oh, like for sure yeah, put a head yeah, yeah exactly you know like you know yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that like I think about these things so will I be able to have like enough time for the people I love and and all that you know you think about like having that fine balance of just being able to sustain like all these hobbies that you have and keep the fire alive, you know? Mm, 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 yeah. Mm. But of course like, I mean if you ask me, like if I ever have a dream about it, I, I can still do it. Like I will still love to form like a ska punk band. A sky <laughs> a ska punk ska punk like, band. Ska, ska punk, like you know like no doubt. Do you play any instrument? Yeah I play the guitar. Mm. Yeah. And hey, why uh, never showcase in your DJ set though? Interesting right? No, Maybe uh, later, uh. Uh, later. <laughs> <laughs> I just make power chords only <laughs> Yeah, I know. I mean, wow, good TikTok content, Anik. Right? Yeah, but I fucking like when I was younger, I always wanted to form like a punk band or mm. something like that. And I kind of like did here and there in little pockets, you know? Mm. Like, yeah. But yeah, like, I mean, um, not say it's a dead dream, but it's just that, like, oh, okay, I don't think about that that much anymore. Yeah, I think with yeah. age also comes, like, you know, you want to do things that are more certain also. Yeah. Mm. Step by step, more, more, uh, yeah, like, more, more procedural. Yeah. yeah. And also, like, I mean, with whatever we're doing with other girls, like, even though other girls not really, like, um, active Super anymore active. and stuff but like you know I feel me and Serene we still kind of like still do the things that we try like we still do the workshops you know we mm. we still guide like you know we, we meet new G DJs we still try to guide them mm. you know and share like whatever information we have with them if we have gigs or whatever we try to band them together mm. you know we don't curate so much like you know like big gigs that we used to do like you know I have like three levels of parties and all that you know but I mean whenever there's an occasion and stuff we'll try to like curate a lineup you mm. know so yeah I guess if we can keep doing that that's great too mm. yeah you know yeah. yeah this one we like I think we never cover a lot of things. Yeah. We can like part two yeah, this conversation. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot. Uh, we can talk a lot. Yeah. yeah. Okay, la. so yeah. but for today. For today. Watch out uh, for the Feng Tao back to back set, bro. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> oh thank everybody. Fucking thank you. Okay, thank you so much. AKA thank Sounds. You. Thank Reverie you. Reverie Podcast. Let's go. <laughs>